Yeah, DNA. Sounds. Sound is atoms vibrating. Vibrating is how to say vibrating. Sounds vi sound vibrations are collected by the floppy, fleshy, fleshy outside of the ear called the pinna. The pinna developed to be the right size and shape to amplify the sounds made by humans. Yes, yeah, some people had uh, bigger ears by mutations and some people had smaller ears by mutations and those people couldn't hear when other humans were shouting, watch out behind you, there's a tiger. And so the people that had the right size pinna for the uh, frequencies of sounds made by humans, they survived and that's how evolution goes on. Developments over millions of years are called evolution. Evolution. Evolution would deselect the humans that can't hear warnings. The pinna acts as a funnel gathering sound waves from a big area and directing them into the ear hole. The ear hole is called the external auditory canal. External auditory canal. Ooh. The pinna and external auditory canal are called the outer ear. Yes, the bits you can see. Lots of people say, oh, how's my ear doing when they're pointing at the cartilage lump that all it does is acts as a funnel for the sounds. Actually, uh, all the clever bits of the ear are inside your skull, where it's protected. The lower pinna is called the earlobe. If the bottom of your earlobe is attached to your head, both your earlobe genes are attached. Earlobe, recessive genes, recessive genes. Recessive genes are shy and only control what your body looks like if your other earlobe gene isn't a bully dominant gene. Yes, if you get a recessive gene from your mum and from your dad, that's when you end up with attached earlobes. Which is cool, it's all wonderful, it's all part of the variety that makes humans lovely. Dominant. What your genes make your body look like is called your phenotype. Phenotype. Of course, lots of people think every human should look the same. You know, they're called fashion magazines, me no like. You will have the earlobes hang free phenotype if one or both of your earlobe genes is the free earlobe. Bully, dominant gene. Uh, comma, I think. Uh -huh. Earlobe. Did I get them all? Genetic scientists used to think that if both parents had attached earlobes, then the baby would have attached earlobes. We now know that earlobes are controlled by more than one gene. Yes, there were some people that wanted to abandon their children. And it doesn't quite work like that. There is actually several genes. Earwax is made by glands in the skin of the external auditory canal to kill any bacteria or fungal spores that waft in by Brownian motion. Yes, there, there's... There, Killing the, your earwax kills bacteria and funguses and, and bad stuff trying to get into your skull via your ear hole. Um, so cleaning your ears too often means you get infections in your ear that could go into your brain. And don't put cotton buds down there. I know it's tempting. I know I do it. But especially don't put cotton buds down there while you're walking around the flat or your house because your elbow gets knocked. Cotton bud gets rammed um, through the outer window of your ear into your middle ear, ear no worky anymore. Brown. Mean.
Mr. Brown. Brownian motion is air molecules moving at a thousand miles per hour. Yeah, that's what they do. Hitting dust, bacteria. Yeah, air molecules are very small. So a thousand miles an hour, hit you in the side of the head. Not a problem, just a bit of air pressure. The fungal spores making them move. Yes. Uh, fungal spores and bacteria just float around in the air like motes of dust. They're even smaller. If you have two dry type earwax recessive genes, you will have dry earwax, like most Asians and Native Americans. If you have one or two wet type earwax genes from your parents, you will have the wet earwax that most Europeans and African people have. Yes, yeah, so wet is dominant. The external auditory canal detects the sound and it directs the sound energy to the eardrum. The sound vibrations in the air make the zum drum vibrate. The eardrum is thin and flat, so it is called a membrane. The inside, the inside eardrum membrane is attached to the hammer bone. The hammer bone is attached to the bone called the anvil. Anvil. The anvil bone is attached to the bone called the stirrup. Because it looks like a stirrup. Uh, the anvil bone kind of looks a bit like a... They're all three tiny little bones. They were named because what they look like, ish. The stirrup bone is the smallest bone in the body and really looks like a miniature stirrup that you could put your foot in to ride a horse. The hammer bone, the hammer, doesn't look like a hammer. Bone. The hammer bone. Yeah, it doesn't look like a hammer. The anvil bone doesn't look like a blacksmith's anvil. The pinna directs the sound vibrations into the external auditory, auditory canal. Auditory. Yes. Earwax kills bacteria and fungi. Brownian motion causes the microscopic bacteria and fungi, fungus to randomly move around in air due to being hit by air molecules going at a thousand miles per hour. If you have grey, dry earwax, then your mother and your father must both have grey, dry earwax. They both, let me go on, they both have two shy, recessive, dry earwax genes. So you will have got a dry, shy gene from your mum and a dry, shy gene from your dad. If either of your earwax genes are the bully, brown, dominant, wet types, then your phenotype will be wet earwax. Sound, sounds air vibrations Make your eardrum membrane vibrate, which makes the hammer bone, then the anvil bone, then the smallest bone in the body, the stirrup bone, vibrate. Cool! Woo. Did you? That was a hot one. 
Did you see the one mistake I made in spelling by, by purpose? On purpose. On purpose. If you did, write down in comments. Press my first person who gets it. First, <laughs> press my picture to get more of my videos. Press like. Press subscribe. Bye.